everyone. Welcome to Lex Talk, World Talk Show presented by Clickaway Creators. Today we have Mr. Divya Agrawal, partner with J Sagar Associates, New Delhi, and a member of firm's dispute resolution practice. He was made a partner in 2016. Divya is a dual qualified Indian advocate and English solicitor. He is a qualified advocate on record at the Supreme Court of India and has been regularly engaged in contentious and high stake disputes which have resulted in landmark judgments. He is a leading practitioner of arbitration law and has represented several multinational corporations, banks, financial institutions and business houses in high stake domestic international commercial arbitrations. Divyam's practice also focuses on shareholder disputes, commercial litigation, insolvency, and bankruptcy matters. Recently, Divyam has been bestowed with ADR Lawyer of the Year and Best Young Achiever Award by prestigious institutions. Hello, Divyam. How are you? I'm good. How are you, Bharti? I'm good too. Thank you for asking, Divyam. I would really love to know how your journey has been as a legal professional so far. Right. Thank you. Thank you very much, Click Away Creators, for giving me this opportunity. Pleasure uh, all ours, Devyam. Well, the journey so far has been enriching and memorable. To start with, I was um, I, I was a disoriented and wandering soul, and law happened by chance to me. I'm I I should be candid. Uh, however, I was fond of dramatics and I had the inclination to perform. So when I entered law school and I was uh, put to task. the closest to stage performance was moot court competition so naturally i had this inclination to do moot court competitions and that's where primarily my focus was during my law school time uh, during law school i did various moots and i honed my skill and eventually won many accolades the most notable one being the stetson moot court competition in florida where i was fortunate to represent india at the world moot court competition and i was adjudged as the third best oralist due to my consistent performance at moots and academics i was bestowed with the best student of the year award twice in a row upon my graduation i went for my masters to london school of economics and political science uh, in international commercial arbitration this experience really helped in shaping me as an individual the experience of sharing platform with like minded individuals from across the globe where learning was not memorizing or mugging up books you discuss you interact and you learn along the way the experience was enriching and transformative post lse i followed my passion for litigation and i joined disputes practice at a tier 1 law firm j sagar associates in their new delhi office i thought it would be a smooth ride but man oh man the initial years were exhilarating it was a roller coaster ride i was a complete novice reporting to seven senior colleagues at a given point of time Uh, it was hell for me at that at a given point but i had that fire in the belly and i wanted to become a better version of myself as methy mcconey famously said my hero was me after 10 years that's what i chased and that's what made me survive over the years i focused on drafting and learning the necessary skill for being a disputes attorney i regularly practice in indian courts i advise clients on strategic implementation hand holding clients and briefing top counsels basically i learned to paddle my own canoe i have been fortunate to advise a wide spectrum of clients from big corporate houses financial institutions high net worth individual to public sector undertaking startups and even an incumbent chief minister of a state i have been privileged to be part of various reported judgments of the supreme court which have now become landmark including the constitution bench decision in balco which set the rules for the arbitral proceedings in india I continue to advise clients in arbitration, insolvency, bankruptcy court, contractual dispute, court-related litigation. Over the years, I was fortunate to continue my learning journey, and in 2015, I finished my advocate on record exam at the Supreme Court of India. Thereafter, I pursued my dual qualification and became solicitor England and Wales in 2019. I have recently been awarded with Best ADR Lawyer of the Year and Best Young Achiever Award by reputed institution. So. all in all the journey so far has been rewarding and full of learning and i continue to chase my hero thank you so much divyam uh, for throwing light uh, on your journey and uh, sharing this with us uh, can you please tell us about your most memorable case and uh, what are your uh, key takeaways from there right one of my most memorable case was in the initial years at jsa i mean though 
it's very difficult to say what is the most memorable case every case is memorable but when it comes to one of the most memorable is, is something which is very close to your heart so for me that was when i was a young fresher i was an associate in the firm and i was roped in in a high stake litigation in supreme court the case had a very interesting legal proposition under securities law because i was fresh off the boat i was not expected to make submissions in the highest court and i used either brief my senior or engage a senior counsel which is equivalent to a queens counsel at uk coincidentally the senior counsel who we had engaged and my senior in office were unavailable and and there was an upcoming hearing so what was something very common uh, was a request to for an adjournment by circulation so it it is a common practice that if if you are unavailable or if there is any kind of a exigency then you can request the court in advance not to take up the matter on that particular day it's a, it's a common practice and usually the courts are receptive towards such request uh, but let me caveat it that i was told in many orientations that hope for the best but prepare for the worst so one day prior to the hearing i was relatively free and i read through the file and did some research next day i attended supreme court and with excitement told the judge that a request for adjournment has been made as luck would have it or i say lack thereof the honorable judge with the same exuberance rejected my request and told me to make submission i was stunned i mean it was it was a nerve wracking moment for me what to do i tried deflecting it i tried requesting that please push it on for another day maybe tomorrow but nothing worked i had no choice but then i composed myself and started making submissions after few hours of my arguments the senior counsel who i had briefed rushed to the court and took over the judge complimented to the senior that i was doing a great job in presenting the submission and i, I should be allowed to finish my submissions before the senior can take over i was my my senior was actually sitting next to me i made submission for another half an hour and thereafter my senior took over few years later i met the honorable judge in an arbitration and he still remembered me as if it was yesterday it was an indeed a wonderful experience and the key take away from the hearing was which which you asked what are the takeaways the first takeaway was that one must be always prepared to handle every eventuality and always prepare the umbrella before it rains and second seize the moment you don't know you will in in india it's difficult to get an opportunity uh, immediately in your initial years and if you are been given that opportunity you should seize the moment because you don't know what is in store for you in future so so as i said the key takeaways are that always prepare yourself and second seize the moment thank you so much uh, divyam uh, i'm sure there are a lot of other cases as well which you would like to discuss so if you want to throw light on another one as well more than welcome so uh yeah it was uh, I, i i did many cases where where the experience was uh, very intriguing you we had to over on the overnight basis turn out matters engage senior counsels there have been cases where we uh, we have we are on the on the wrong side of everything the judge is against us the law is against us and we just just grapple with facts and all but it is uh, in my view it, it it is really at that point of time when you as a lawyer must come out come up with an out of the box solution to actually provide uh, these the, the genuine service to the client this is the real time when your skills are tested and these these are the times when you need to uh, you need to come up with brilliant ideas which can even change the track of the entire case i i remember doing one such case uh, which is again a reported judgment where we have been advising on an insolvency law and the entire scenario was against us but we came out with uh, with with an english law theory and tried applying it in indian perspective uh, for indian law that issue was uh, untested when we used that english law theory the court was really receptive towards us they actually molded some of the ultimate uh, uh, decision in our favor which is again a, a good take away that don't stop at what you have in front of you just don't uh, limit your uh, research or limit your answers to indian law the, uh, the nowadays judges everybody is uh, is known to understand uh, foreign law known to understand and adapt these laws have persuasive value and if you try to bring up those innovative arguments you never know your case may go your way 
Right. Thank you. Thank you very much for answering uh, the, you know, the, uh, the question, uh, Mr. Vivian. Uh, now, the question that I'm about to ask now, uh, obviously, everybody has a different take on this. Uh, but with your experience and knowledge, uh, how do you look at uh, arbitration in 2021 and uh, the changes that we might see uh, five years down the line? Okay, Be before, so I, I'll break your question into two parts. First is how I perceive arbitration in, 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 in this year. And second is what is in store for us in the coming five years. That's like a crystal ball question. So I'll come to that. Bef and, and, and before I answer this question, let me give you some statistics. Okay, World Bank in their ranking of doing business in India has ranked India as number 63. Okay, surprisingly in the same rank for enforcement of contracts in India, we are ranked as 163. Clearly, there is a lack of investors confidence in our judicial system. From this lacuna stems the requirement of an alternate mode of resolution of disputes. Because of its inherent efficiency and flexibility, arbitration is a preferred mode of alternate dispute resolution world over. Increased international commerce involving parties from multiple jurisdictions have ensured that international arbitration is widely accepted means of resolving disputes. Uh, world over, there is a focus shift on virtual platforms, online dispute resolution, uh, and, and because of this inherent flexibility, I perceive arbitration to be to have an exponential growth in the next five years. Uh, now, just couple this with the fact that how, what is the reception you're getting in uh, before the Indian courts? Indian courts have nowadays made it very clear that they would like to have minimum judicial intervention when it comes to arbitration. In fact, recently in one of the cases in Supreme Court by name of Vidya Drolia, uh, Supreme Court said that when in doubt, do refer to the arbitral tribunal. So they were basically dealing with a case where an arbitral tribunal was supposed to be appointed. Uh, obviously, the party resisting the appointment made certain uh, submissions. And the court said that when the court is not sure about those submissions and when there is any doubt, they should refer those issues to the arbitral tribunal. Let the arbitral tribunal only deal with those issues. So I would say that there is a focused or I would say a forced shift towards uh, arbitration and that to arbitration done remotely. The arbitral rules of most arbitration institutions provide for the possibility of dealing with matters remotely. Even Arbitration Act, the Indian Arbitration Act also provides, uh, also do, have no bar for carrying out uh, the hearing through on a remote basis. Protocols, in fact, have been put in place by various organizations like there is a Vienna protocol, there is a Seoul protocol, there is guidance note by Combar, ICC, SEAC, Ancetral. I mean, they, there is enough guidance to have arbitration hearings and that too in a remote fashion. And just to, just to give you an example why arbitration in 2021 and going forward uh, is the preferred mode and that too added with a remote setup of hearing. Um, uh, I, I conducted an arbitration recently. It was a, it is a London seated arbitration and it is, it is done um, by ICC. Uh, the arbitration was conducted uh, by the International Arbitration Center. We had transcribing done by an, uh, an, a body called Opus and the tribunal provided the hearing protocol, which is like a checklist uh, to address preliminary considerations uh, in advance. So, so it was clear that do, who can share documents, what is the speaking protocol, uh, there are going to be virtual breakout room for parties and tribunal, there was messaging and chat function, confidentiality and security of the proceedings were maintained. So, so what I'm trying to explain here is that a arbitration because of its inherent efficiency is, is, is the way to go and coupled with the fact that the, the, the unprecedented environment we are, we are grappling with, the, the changing world we are grappling with, uh, the remote hearings done in a virtual mode uh, in arbitrations is the way forward. In fact, uh, I should also point out another benefit. That benefit is uh, particularly for the stakeholder because when a stakeholder is doing an arbitration and that too by a virtual platform, they are reducing cost, they are saving time, it's environment friendly, the, it's convenient, people from multiple geographical locations can converge virtually. Uh, I have seen arbitrations where people from London, Singapore, India, Dubai, uh, US, everywhere, they are converging in one particular virtual platform and carrying out the entire proceedings in a seamless manner. 
parties can also consider having a fast track hearing where uh, fast track arbitration where the, where the arbitration is done completely on a documentary basis so all in all and and to conclude i would say arbitration is is the way to go one must ensure that in in most of the in fact uh, government and big hub, big corporate houses all have started incorporating arbitration clauses in their uh, in contractual arrangements and i would say that's the future and couple this with remote hearing is is what i feel uh, is going to be for the next 5 years all right thank you uh, thank you so much devam uh, for the answer uh, one thing that we were discussing about uh, so your opening uh, answer was that you know uh, that there is a lack of confidence that you know our judicial system is shown so how do we overcome that if you have an answer to that i mean i'm 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 a layman right so i i just want to get a better understanding of this that how do we overcome that and uh, what can be done basically so i uh, so lack of confidence let me let me just clarify two things one is that what i mentioned was the uh, world bank statistics so don't hold it against me i'm not saying i have complete confidence in our judicial system <laughs> yeah. uh, but but even for those statistics the uh, conf- the lack of confidence is coming from the disposal rate because of a huge backlog of cases because of uh, india being a very uh, litigation friendly country there is a huge pile of cases before the court and the it's not that the judges are not competent they are extremely competent people uh, they are providing judgments literally on a daily basis but the backlog is so much that uh, i mean you take it as an example of a demand and supply right the, it is it is so much that it's hard for them to even manage it out and that is why we should always see what is the how, how do we reduce this burden the only way to reduce this bur- burden is to find an alternate mode of dispute resolution and that's where the arbitration the mediation and conciliations of the world have taken over and they are considered as a more effective substitute to judicial system all right thank you thank you so much uh, divyam uh, now um, having discussed about arbitration your most memorable case and now we know about your journey as well um with this uh, unprecedented environment uh, what changes have you introduced in your work environment uh, to achieve efficiency in the in the workspace i'm i'm sure every organization and every individual has worked on it so how have you managed it okay that's a tough one so um, i would start by uh, quoting steve jobs steve jobs said that innovation is that ability to see a change as an opportunity not a threat so i would say that the pandemic and the unprecedented environment brought about not a threat but an opportunity to change and adapt to the changing world for that uh, i as a person i have embraced this changed and uh, entered into a paperless environment where all my documentation is on cloud or online database and all my review of documentation happens on a virtual platform uh, and 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 to maybe to elaborate a bit i am using softwares and using uh, devices which help me uh, in a very user friendly manner provide all the case materials all the documents relevant for the case i just have to uh, open it on my laptop or my ipad and and everything is in one place and uh, trust me this transformation has considerably improved my efficiency and placed me in a better position to serve my client i have seen instances where a client has called me at an odd hour and i just uh, happen to have one of my device in my hand and just during that conversation i have just flipped through the document refreshed my memory and there and then gave an answer to the client it was not possible earlier when i was just reliant on uh, on uh, paper on document even it i would say it's not environment friendly also lawyers are considered lawyers in the entire uh, legal industry is considered to be one of the uh, most non environment friendly uh, industry because we use so much paper there is so much paper wastage in fact even the court systems now are permitting you to do online filing so when the courts are adapting to it when the arbitral tribunals are adapting to it then why should we not adapt to it and 
and it has it has done wonders for me and i would recommend to all my friends and whoever is is uh, the audience here that you should consider switching to a more environment friendly method of paperless uh, documentation start using online database thank you thank you very much that was quite an inspiration and uh, of course you guys have heard the vim please try to save paper as much as you can uh, again i would really like to thank you mr divyam for sharing such great insights with us uh, we really look forward to having a chat with you again in the future on some other trending topics in the international legal industry and uh, for our viewers uh, if you like this chat with mr divyam please like and share this video and also subscribe to click away creators youtube channel to appreciate what we do and you have more coming from industry leaders mr divyam any uh, anything else that you would like to uh, say to yeah, our I, I, i will just say like and subscribe and <laughs> and, uh, and i am going to be part of the dubai show of lex talk world uh, i am uh, i'm going to be part of one of the panel discussion so in case if you would like to hear me then then i would be more than obliged oh, wow oh, great great so you have heard the vim again and uh, this is bharti for lex talk signing off <laughs>